our last video, we did what we usually do. We wrote SQL scripts to accomplish tasks. Now in this video, we'll be looking at how we can use the power of our SQL Server Management Studio to do the same functionality without us needing to write a line of code or SQL. So we are back to our similar screen. We have no script code here, but then we do have in our object explorer our table. So we can just right click our table and then we can say edit top 200 rows. Now, when we click that, we see a tabular format like what we were describing from the earlier parts of these videos, showing us all of the data and the respective columns that these data points are in. So we see one, we didn't put any IDs into the system up until now. And we see that we have IDs going on counting. We skipped two because remember we tried to insert a second record and it had an error. So the auto incrementer said, oh, an attempted second record was there. It failed, but two is no longer a valid number to use in uniquely identifying anything. So it skipped two, but then each other successful one got its own ID value. So that is the point of using that identity attribute. Secondly, you can see that each last name and first name went in. So it really didn't matter the order that we put the we put the columns and then put the data in. The fact is the data should have lined up with each column and the date of births. And I'll just expand this and you see that because we're using date time, even though we didn't specify, all we did was specify the year, month and day it still appends a time value on it. So you can actually use this time date time value if you need to keep track of time, the exact point in time something happened, then date time is very ideal for that. And then we have the enrollment, which is similar, but then we see that we have some with values and some with nulls. So once again, because we made it a nullable column, then we see that we were able to insert some records with no value and insert some with values. Now you may have noticed that I was actually able to click in the column and it became editable. And if you took note of that, then that's excellent. When you are in this mode, it literally said edit top 200. So it ran a small query and it got the top 200 rows and it gave us a form where we can actually change or add new ones if we want. So first we're going to add new rows. So this new student, I'm going to use my last name and I have a friend called Artemis. And then that person's date of birth is 2001, the ninth month, the fifth day. And I'm going to actually put in an invalid value here for the date of birth. So that's the 50th day. We all know, at least in our Western calendar, there's no 50th day. And I'm going to press enter, which would trigger the save. And then we see here that we get an error message. The value in this cell was not valid. So it's telling us go back to the drawing board. There's something wrong. So I'll just edit it and I'll just take off that zero and I'll just press enter. And you'd see that it just falls in line, those red icons disappear, and we have a 12th record, Williams Artemis. So you can actually use this view to just put in your records if it is that you don't want to write the script. Of course, the script is more flexible because you can actually save the script and share it and execute it on another machine at will, whereas this one, it you have to be on that particular machine in that particular database to fill it out. So this is more manual for me. The script is more automated because I can always tweak that and share it. So that's how you go about inserting data in your data tables using the editor. You can go ahead and insert more records and you can experiment with inserting more records in the courses table.